Hey, we're at Rails World 2025 in Amsterdam, day one, and I'm here with Jason Meller. He's a, a VP of Engineering at 1Password. He's also a Rails Foundation member, and um, he is the author of the Honest Security Manifesto. Um, He's also a speaker at this conference and will be giving a talk tomorrow afternoon about um, pass keys have problems, but so will you if you ignore them. So it's a very interesting talk. Um, Jason, would you be able to tell us more about uh, what the Rails, Rails World audience will hear about tomorrow? Yeah, so the goal with this pass keys talk is to respond to a blog post that DHH put out towards the end of last year where he had attempted to add pass keys to one of the, I think it was to Writebook or Campfire, and he wasn't able to actually get it over the line because he saw a bunch of problems with the user experience, so he just gave up. My fear is that people read that blog post and they thought to themselves, pass keys aren't ready for prime time. I should ignore them. We don't really need to think about them. And so the goal of the talk is to actually talk about the types of attacks that they are meant to protect against. I'm actually going to go walk through a real attack that occurred uh, to a cybersecurity expert, Troy Hunt, step by step. So we'll go through that. And then the next thing is to talk about how pass keys and other forms of MFA solve it and how a lot of the MFA forms that we're using today, like one-time passcodes or push notifications or SMS, if we're still using that, how they don't actually solve for that type of attack. So we'll go through that whole thing. And then we're going to talk about best practices of how to actually implement pass keys the right way. You don't have to go all the way to the end of like replacing passwords like DHH kind of implied. You can just get started by adding them and then progress add as, a, as a progressive enhancement, not necessarily thinking about the end game of replacing passwords. We're many years away from that. Let's just get started with the basics and then we can all learn together as the technology evolves. Yeah, that's really interesting. Like you... Um you mentioned the different kinds of MFA and like uh, I've been like noticing in applications that like they've been using it in like having different workflows of like having a password and then MFA or just like using um, pass keys to authenticate themselves like why do you think like a lot of I guess applications still use just like passwords and like what do you think the future of account security will be? Yeah, I, I think a lot of people use passwords because they're familiar. We know what, how to use them. We've bought technology like 1Password to help us manage that problem already. So it's a known quantity and it's just easy and you can see that in the tooling. Like Rails for instance shipped the, you know, the has secure password generators on top of it so you can do password resets. That all came out in Rails 8 last year. So it's just, it's very easy to add password authentication to a web app today. So the issue isn't that passwords are, are an issue in them of itself. Like they are, like they create phishing opportunities, but you can fix that with MFA. The thing about pass keys, which is great, is they work a lot like SSH keys. Like, so if you're used to signing into a server with an SSH key, you just sort of present and prove that you are in possession of the private key, and then boom, you're into the SSH key server, and there isn't really a bunch of ceremony after that. That's really what we're trying to accomplish with pass keys, is to effectively do the first and second factor in one shot and get the same security as if you had gone through this whole thing. Now, security is a great lure to get people to try this stuff, but what's a better lure is actually reducing the friction of using your app. So a lot of the e-commerce platforms like Amazon, they're starting to publish stats. Mm -hmm. And they're saying like, oh, the friction is so low. Now people are spending more money on our platform. They are spending more time on the social network. They aren't fretting about signing in. I think Roblox just reported that 97% of people who use passkeys get in yeah. on the first try. And the number for passwords is like far below that. For sure, like I feel like the experience is like super seamless, right? Like I'm that kind of person that saves their passwords in one password, and like um, it's funny the workflow is that like I go through one password, use a, like Face ID, which is a passkey, right. to get a password. It's it's really interesting to see like it would just be easier if I could just 
use a passkey to log in in the first place. So that is super interesting. Um, what is like one thing that you would want um, folks listening to get out of your talk? Like, what is that one thing you think? I, I think the theme of tomorrow's talk is don't let perfect be the enemy of good, right? Mm -hmm. We can't say we're going to give up on this new form of authentication because it doesn't get us all the way to be able to totally rip out passwords out of our app. Yeah. Let's consider the fact that we're already doing MFA in a lot of our apps today, and this is a far superior way to do it. It will make the user experience of signing in better, and that means you can still use all the recovery options that you're using today. This is just a progressive enhancement on top of that. And that's also true of your passkey implementation. There's so many options in terms of how you set it up versus like, do you want to make sure that the passkey is like bound to a device yeah. or do you want to enforce like a hardware, uh, like roaming authenticator? Don't worry about any of that. Like think about what you're trying to augment, which is like a string that's yeah. like the word fluffy cat. <laughs> like that's, that's what we're trying to replace. So let's not like make it harder than it needs to be. Let's just celebrate the fact that a user is using any form of a passkey and not fret over all the details. Yeah, that's super true. Like, like it's always an iterative experience with all of these things. So I'm super excited to listen to your talk tomorrow. And recordings of the talks will be available within two weeks of Rails World. Um, Thanks Shopify for so uh, sponsoring these on-site interviews and more content and interviews are coming along um, your way. Thank you.